All right, my friends, we're going to look at a little worked example of using uh, f equals ma to solve for how a system will, will move. Specifically, what we're going to do here is um, we have a block on a ramp, and the ramp, the entire system is pulled to the left with some acceleration. And what we're going to do is find the maximum acceleration such that the block will not slide down the ramp. In other words, if you accelerate this whole system to the left slow enough, the block will just come along with the ramp. But if you pull the ramp too quickly or accelerate it too quickly to the left, then this block would actually start to slip. You would kind of leave the block behind. And so that's the system that we're going to look at. So we're going to follow a little uh, process that your physics teacher is probably trying to show you. Um, and that is to begin by drawing forces because you'll have a hard time learning how something's going to move without drawing forces. So let's draw the forces on this block. Well, first we would have gravity pointing down, not caring about our ramp or anything else. Uh, and then we would have a normal force pointing perpendicular to the surface. And then, now you notice this block, this blue block, is supposed to accelerate to the left with the ramp. Well, so something's got to be going to the left to help the block keep up as the ramp is pulled to the left. Well, that force that's going to the left that's going to help uh, accelerate the block along is actually friction. So friction is going to go up the ramp. It's actually going to help the block move to the left with us as we pull the ramp to the side. So here are our three forces that act on the block. Our next thing we need to do is decide which way to orient axes so that we could start to use F equals MA. Now there's a couple, there's a number of ways to do it. Frankly, you could put the axes any way you wanted. But a couple ways make maybe more sense than others. One possible way to orient the axes would actually be to put them diagonally um, such that one axis runs along the ramp. But then you'd have to do some trigonometry with the acceleration over here. So I'm, I'm not going to advocate for that particular method. Um, what I am going to do here is I'm going to align my x and y axes such that the acceleration of the system or the acceleration of this blue block is directly along my x-axis. So this blue block is just going to move horizontally to the left or accelerate horizontally to the left and so that's why I'm going to orient my axes like this um, and then what we need to do is do f equals ma along those directions well so let's do it first we're going to look in the x direction in other words looking at horizontal stuff giving given our choice of axes so we're going to use f equals ma along the horizontal direction so we have to look in the problem for horizontal forces well, what those are going to be, what I'm blinking in and out of existence here, are the horizontal components of the friction force and the normal force. Um, so let's collect those. The horizontal component of the friction force here would be, well, mu s n, but then times the cosine of 15 because I need to project it down um, onto the horizontal direction. So this little angle in here where I'm wiggling this mouse, that is a 15 degree angle. That's the angle between the surface of the ramp and the horizontal. This n sine 15, that is the horizontal component of the normal force. And where I'm getting that is this angle here where I'm wiggling the mouse would also be 15 degrees. So if you kind of project n onto the sort of opposite side of this little right triangle, that's going to be n sine 15, but pointed in the negative x direction. So that's why it's minus n sine 15. Well, then we get to set that equal to MA, and here's where the choice of axes comes in really handy. All of our acceleration is to the left, so all of our acceleration is along positive F, or positive X, so we can call the acceleration along X just A. It's this acceleration. Um, so that's all the physics there for the horizontal direction. Let's look at the vertical direction now. So we're going to do some of the forces in the Y direction is M times A in the Y direction. Well, so we don't want to look at these horizontal forces anymore. Let's look at vertical forces. Well, there's actually three. Of course, mg, the force due to gravity, is vertical. That's straight down. But then the other two vertical forces present in the problem are the vertical part of normal force and the vertical part of the friction force. Well, so let's collect all those. In the positive direction, we have the vertical component of friction. So that's going to be mu s sine 15. Um, this is mu s, but if I want to project it onto the opposite side of the known angle, that's going to be um, mu s sine 15. 
and then also going upward is n times cosine of a 15 degree angle. This angle where I'm wiggling the mouse here would be 15, um, right here where I'm wiggling the mouse. And so if I project this normal force um, and find the vertical component of it, it um, that's going to be n cosine 15. So that's the second term, and that's also upward, so it's positive. And then finally, we don't have to do any trigonometry with mg because it's already along our, uh, one of our axes. It's along the negative y direction, so minus mg. And then because we've chosen our axes like this, there's no acceleration along the y direction, so the acceleration is zero. Once you're here, um, your physics teacher will actually be pretty happy because you've actually done, um, the physics is actually done. This is now just a math problem, algebra problem. We have two equations for two unknowns. We have the unknown n, and we have the unknown a, which is actually what we're looking for in this problem. Um, so we need, we need to figure out what this a is. Um, so we can work through the algebra a little bit. Um, here's our situation set up. Here's our variable a that we're looking for. Um, and here's our two equations that we just derived. So a few strategies for this. Uh, the one I would use is actually just solve each for the normal force, because that's the variable that we want to get rid of. Um, so what I'm going to do is solve my horizontal um, equation for f equals ma. I'm just going to solve that for the normal force. Um, so you'll get normal force equals um, ma divided all, all by all these trig coefficients that are in front of uh, normal force, or coming along with normal force. Um, so here's an expression for normal force coming from the horizontal information. And I'll do the same thing with the vertical information. Let's just solve for the normal force. Um, kick mg over to the other side, and then just divide by all the coefficients of normal force. And you'll be left with this expression. So here's an expression for normal force from horizontal information. Here's an expression for normal force from vertical information. And we can now just set them equal to each other because they're both expressions for the normal force. So setting these two things equal to each other looks pretty messy. But um, realize that all we're trying to do is solve for this acceleration A. Um, looks like mass is going to cancel. So you could actually slash that out on both sides. And then all that would be left is you'd have acceleration over some stuff uh, equals, equals mg over some stuff. So what I would do is multiply both sides by the denominator on the left. And that will actually completely solve it then. So you'll have acceleration equals g well, times some dimensionless numbers. So acceleration is some fraction of g. And um, we can solve for that by plugging in numbers now. So our coefficient of static friction in this little example is 0.5. Um, and we'll use g equals 9.8. Um, you could use g equals 10 if you're doing AP. But anyway, we'll, we'll just use 9.8. And when you plug in all the numbers, make sure your calculator is in degrees, since we're using degrees right now, um, you'll get 2.01 meters per second squared. Um, so what that means is if the uh, system were accelerating to the left at less than 2.01 meter per second squared, the block will stay on. If you tried to yank the ramp faster than that 2.01, it would come off. So there were a lot of, uh, well, trees in this forest, but just so you see the, the forest here through the trees, um, just a reminder, all we did, the, the way we kicked this off was we drew the forces on the block that was on the ramp. We picked a set of axes, um, and a set of x and y axes. We used f equals ma in the horizontal direction and f equals ma in the vertical direction. Uh, on the left, we picked off all the horizontal forces, set them equal to ma. Uh, on the right, we picked off all the vertical forces. There were three of them. And uh, we set them also equal to ma in that direction, which happened to be zero. So hopefully that's helpful, and uh, thanks for watching.